Judd Craig. It has the title of a GOP manager of the reconciliation bill. We'll ask him how he feels about that. Uh, we showed you his fiery statements about what he calls the asteroid of debt uh, that is headed towards our nation. And Senator Craig says that that is going to be the result of the health care bill. We're very glad to be joined right now by New Hampshire Republican Senator Judd Craig. He's the ranking member of the Senate Budget Committee. Uh, Senator, good to have you here. Good morning to you. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate well, it. You know, you, you've suggested that at this point, uh, it may be that the best that Republicans can do is to point out bad policy, uh, that the, you believe that this bad policy is in this health care. Is that, is that all that's going to happen today in this reconciliation uh, procedure? Well, it looks like the Democrats are going to walk in lockstep and oppose amendments that make a lot of sense, uh, which would significantly improve the bill, but they're just going to vote, vote everything down. For example, I have an amendment that says the Medicare savings in this bill, which are huge, there's about a trillion dollars of Medicare cuts in this bill when it's fully implemented over 10 years, that those savings should be used to make Medicare stronger and more solvent. We know Medicare is in a serious situation. It's going to go bankrupt in about five years. Uh, if we're going to save a trillion dollars out of Medicare and make beneficiaries take basically cuts in their services, uh, that money ought to go to benefit uh, senior citizens. Instead, uh, the money in this bill, that those Medicare savings go to create a new entitlement program uh, for people who don't pay into Medicare, never have paid into Medicare, and are not senior citizens. So as a very practical matter, uh, this amendment, I think, is reasonable. Uh, there are other reasonable amendments being offered. John McCain has suggested that we knock out some of these sweetheart deals like the Louisiana Purchase. Why shouldn't we do that? Uh, that would be an improvement to this bill. But all of these amendments are going to be voted down, it appears, on very much a party-line vote, uh, which is unfortunate. and. But it's a reflection of the way this bill has been passed so far. There's been very little attempt to come across the aisle, very little. Uh, the yeah. only bipartisanship was the opposition in the House you know, uh, to the bill. I'm curious what you think about the impact on, on the coming elections in November. And I, I just want to take a look at a statement from Steny Hoyer uh, in an interview that he did. And he says, from that standpoint, I think that it was the right thing to do. He's talking about passing the health care bill. He says, I think that Americans will come to that conclusion. And I don't think it's going to cost us a lot of seats. What do you think about that? Well, I think if Americans focus on what this bill is going to do, they're going to be very upset. You know, this bill is going to expand the government by $2.6 trillion. It's going to cut Medicare by a trillion dollars and use the money to create new programs for people who aren't on Medicare. It's going to force a lot of small employers, small business people, to drop their insurance for employees and force employees on the exchange on these exchanges. If you have Medicare Advantage, you're probably going to lose it. There are going to be a lot of people in this country who's Medicare, whose health care is impacted directly by this. And then there's the taxes in the bill, which are huge. So you know, I, I a, let me just jump in, if I may, Senator. I mean, the, 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 the question is uh, when all that is going to kick in. Uh, a lot of people feel that the initial benefits, you know, the kids covered uh, until they're 26, all that right. kind of thing, is going to feel pretty good to most people. And that that may carry the momentum until November. And that the pain that's in this bill, is your, the pain that you're referring to, isn't really going to be felt by the time elections roll around. Well, you must assume that the American people aren't very smart to say that, because the American people are filled with a, bit, a, a very strong strain of common sense. And common sense tells them that you can't grow the government by $2.6 trillion and not end up passing on to our kids a weaker country and a country that's more in debt. That you can't raise taxes the way this bill is going to raise taxes and not end up stifling growth. And that you can't cut Medicare by a trillion dollars and expect seniors to get as good a program. Now, sure, this is, all these, program, all these uh, actions may not kick in immediately, but people are going to know they're coming. And I think they're going to say, why? Why? Why Why are we doing this? We could have gotten all this insurance market reform without this massive expansion in government. I mean, all of us supported the insurance market reform part of this bill. Well, you're right about the American people. They're pretty smart. Uh, and we they thank are. you very much for being with us. And I hope you'll come back because uh, we do want to get into the financial reforms, which, which it seems are going to be the next big uh, step that may try to get pushed through uh, in a fairly partisan manner. At least that's the way it appears right now. And I hope we'll talk about that next time, sir. I would enjoy that, Martha. Good thank to you. have you with us, Senator. Senator Judge. Yeah, the quote of the day.